No Offence But, where we discuss the uncomfortable topics, drop the truth bombs and have the raw and real conversations that make you feel socially acceptable. Guys, if you've enjoyed listening, please ensure you give us a follow and if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe for more updates. So guys, we're talking about money today. I'm really happy we're talking about this. Oh, it's yeah. a super sweaty subject yeah. for me. You know, do you know what? It's a super Free sweaty. Builder. It's a sweaty subject for me, but I just think, oh my god, let me change. This is giving fucking Del Boy on my wrist. Look at that. Oh the my ick. lord. Oh, god. It was sitting on top. Oh, yeah, Ugh. we're like hanging out the end. Oh, um, <laughs> it is a sweaty conversation for anyone. I think money. I find like as Brits, we are very what's the word? Coy. Coy, and I do think we should talk about money more often. Maybe what does coy mean? Shy. Shy. Really? You know, nobody will ever ask, oh, what do you coy? want? C-O-Y? Mm. Oh. You'd never, you've never asked somebody, oh, what do you earn salary? What is, what's your yearly? Or It's actually considered quite vulgar and intrusive to ask somebody how much money they earn. I don't know why. I don't I know. Would you, to my friends about money. would you ask your friend like what they're on annual? Yeah, I so have one done. of my friends is American and she was like, oh, you know, I make this. And I'm just really happy that she told me. I find what about it inspiring. English? I do. You're right. I but then what it, if you're making a shit wage? I think it comes from context, right? Wait, but shit. Based on who? If like that's how you standard. feel, so if, then you feel like they might be embarrassed to say yeah, it. That's oh, what I mean. That's you're what I right. mean. But also, just going back to what you were saying, Queen, I think it's sweaty because I know most relationships aren't even talking about their financial situation. Majority aren't. Majority aren't. And I think money's a big... Money, money's... Everyone says money's root of all evil. It's not. It's not. It's how you deal with it. But I think you can either, you know, if you've got a lot of debt in your relationship, yeah, that's going to cause stress. If you aren't smart with your money and you piss it up the wall, mm -hmm. yeah, that's so gonna I had cause this a lot of conversation with my friend because she said she's in a relationship where she's really good with money and her partner isn't. Mm. I said, oh, well, stress. yeah, I was like, look, you're not gonna, no one's perfect, so it's not gonna happen where you're probably gonna find two really great people at money. Um, like it's more more often that you're not gonna find that yeah. than what you are. That's what I mean. So because you could find that for sure. Mm. Um, I said to her, I was like, this is what I learned on the money course with the relationship where like Karen and Sharon say two women that are together. One earns five, one earns two, seven thousand. I love that, pot. Karen and Sharon. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. They um they earn seven thousand together and they put out money for date night, they put money for savings, for investments, they put money for bills. I've got and then whatever's best story in a minute. Crack on, babe, this is so good. Whatever's left, they split the money. So they've got evenly the same amount, five hundred quid each a month for say. And um, I said that to my friend, I said, maybe you should do that because then you're like to your partner, this is how much you've got, this is how much I've got. You can't come and ask me for money at the end because we've got the same amount. So if you've not got any more, that is your problem. You need to sort that out. You're not taking any more money from here because, and I said, it's not controlling, that's completely fair, but you'd have to kind of limit that person if they are crappy of money because mm -hmm. otherwise it's just gonna cause arguments and whatever down the line. And also you're educating your partner. If you just let your partner do willy nilly what they want with their money because you know, it's their money. Are you even helping them grow? Let me tell you this freaking story that I heard. I spend a lot of time on Instagram reels yeah, lately. It's so <laughs> fun. I'm never really a scroller. But now at the minute, I'm like, maybe the algorithm has changed. The stuff is grabbing me, right? Yeah. So. And maybe because you're feeling better. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually interested. like interested in life and what other people have to say. It's amazing. Yeah. So this couple, I'm really I'm desperate, desperate to remember this right. So a couple are together. They have been for X amount of years and they earn roughly the same. This was the thing. And they have a joint account that they put money in. And then they have what they call their own personal fun accounts. Okay. So it's up to you how much you put in your fun account every month. That's mm -hmm. your business. If you piss your money up the wall and you don't save and you don't do anything like that, that's on you. But joint account is full. Your own fun account is your own. Her, she was saying her other half is really bad with money. He doesn't put anything in his fun account. He pisses it up the wall, buys little, little things. And then she had spent months and months and months saving. She's a gamer, big time gamer. And she set up, um, 
she was going to, she listed a load of stuff and the people in the podcast were like, whoa, that's at least seven grand or whatever. So she'd done really well to save up for this. And when she told her partner she was going to do a games room downstairs because she'd saved up this money, he accused her of financial cheating, hiding money and said, you are so out of order. If you've made that much in your fun pot, I think you should have shared it with me because I don't have as much. What? And yet they're on the same salary. They earn the same. Ooh. This dude's just a fucking bum who can't control his spending. And he's vexed that his wife has partner sorry has basically created a lifelong no, really gaming room said this isn't now. that disgusting no, I'm glad you asked for one reason people do not understand even when you're on a lower income it's not that it's never a lack of money it's how you use your money yeah you got that is more legit smart. you've just seen like, they're on the same you can save seven grand but someone in their mindset like a lot of people listening to this are like i don't earn enough i can't save rah, rah, rah. like you whatever can. the stories are you can and this is why i go through this month i've been messy luckily my app was like you're spent nine percent less and i was like well it should be what's way that less. Monzo. My Monzo bank apps. Yeah, oh, so I'm glad it tells you. App. Oh, really? Like, yeah. yeah, I check all my spending, like where I spend it, where it goes. And I spent way too much on eating out this month than what I usually would. Oh, I need that. But I mean, I fine tune my spending because you, when you're unconsciously spending, yeah, you generally can't save. And I haven't saved this month because I've been fucking unconsciously, unconsciously spending. spending. Mm. Whereas I tell you guys, like I've been able to save so much money off not really much more money. Like, actually, it's gone less because I um, have been so conscious with my money. Yeah. And when I'm unconscious in a month, I can blatantly see the difference. So I want oh, people yeah. to understand, I really believe that. And I, I'm telling you this from experience. Like, I <laughs> only ever speak from experience. I never say- You know, on one though, about, let's go on. what I love about that, it tells you your highlight of the month, like October, amount in, amount out. And sometimes I'm like, that's see, no, sometimes I'm, I'm like how is it more out than it was in yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't have what's happening math then, math then. <laughs> see i'm very visual so for me an account like that would be perfect i've been with barclay since i was 16 oh God, yeah, so i've got it. a i've got my current i've got my business and then i do need something that i can put money into savings i'm gonna be honest i'm the shittest person at saving um, through my 20s, I've always been, I've just spunked oh, yeah. money up the wall. Same. I mean, look, I've put my money, I've got, you know, my house, my car, great pair of tits. Oh, yes, girl. Do you know what I mean? Like, I've invested my money well in some areas. And then I've also fucking spunked it up the wall. But I also was just having this chat with my friends the other day. I feel like if I died tomorrow, I've fully lived my life. Like, I live my life on the regs. I party, I enjoy it. I do fun stuff with Santino. I'm happy. I don't live a bad life. I mean, you can still live a great life and still save. So mm -hmm. this is my thing. So obviously I've set up a, a new business with my social media and business consultant. Um, and I was having a chat with, you know, Jim in the kitchen and we, we were just saying, I was like, look, I'm being honest. I was opening up about like my money because, you know, I've got debts that I've been left in through buying out my ex and stuff and that's just the reality of it so I don't choose I don't want to cut back on areas in my life so my thing is I'll just set up another business my goal is to make that a six-figure business next year that will pay off my debt and it's like it's look at your mindset with money as well like you know we are going through uh, inflation crisis right now are you somebody that's like i'd much rather just cut back and cut off your sky tv cut off your takeaway God, or is it the mindset of how can i make more money let me work harder yeah let me work harder or not but even harder like, it's like smart you might have to even have to do both though like yeah, in some, a lot sure. of people's circumstances like i know sure. mine personally i love cutting back but like sometimes you have to go backwards to go forward yeah and i love this my favorite part is stripping everything away yeah and being like right let's start from zero again yeah because we've kind of fucked up again so now <laughs> again <everything> back. yeah <laughs> and we always say when pattern. i've got that next lot of money coming in i'm changing the blueprint so I love BS. that. So just being able to be brave enough with yourself to look yourself in the eye and be like, I fucked up, I gotta start again. Yeah. And I really love what you ladies are talking about. It's like, look at your current means. I was listening to Gordon Ramsay in an interview the other day and he said um, when him and his wife were young, they saved up and saved up for a deposit. They lived in London. They saw this amazing apartment they wanted to get together, right? They'd saved 20 grand. He then went to dinner with his partner's dad to ask for the other half. He was like, we're really struggling. We've done the 20. Can I borrow 20 grand of you? I will pay you back in a year. And the dad said, of course, um, but let's talk again and have lunch and have the same conversation once you've got rid of that Porsche. Ooh. That made him think. Ooh. 
So, I mean, yeah, well done. You're so saved you 20 grand. Everything you, you can are, to be yeah. resourced. You have a yeah. Porsche sitting outside. Now you're coming to me. You want 20 grand. Get rid of that Porsche. Do you know then I'll loan you the 20 grand. Well, on in- that's such a good point. On Instagram, I heard this the other day and it really hit me like that. Mm. It was like, are you paying more for your monthly car or are you putting more into your investment account? Oh, I was like, <gasps> no, honestly, guys, Sorry. I've, so my car insurance has gone up 600 pound this year. I don't even know why. I think there's been a couple of break-ins in the village with like Range Rovers. I don't have a Range Rover, but obviously I've got a four by four. So anyway, I've shopped around and that was the cheapest, my wow. renewal. So I'm just like, That's it so is nice. what it is. Ridiculous. But even that just made me like really look at how much I spend on my car. And I'm looking at close to a mortgage, the same as my mortgage. It's <laughs> ridiculous. No, it's, You're kidding. It's, no, babe, it's like £1,200 a month for my car. Yes, I do like the nice things in life, but it does come to a point where, you know, I'm th- going to be 32 in a, uh, in a couple of weeks. You know, when you're like, shit, I'm getting closer to that retirement point and I'm at the point where I don't actually work for an employer. So mm-hmm. it is all on me. So I've got to be setting up everything in place to position myself that I can completely have a break and, you know. Relax in your old age. Relax, yeah. So do you remember, Lace, you didn't come that time, but obviously I know you've done a lot of work on it. The T. Harvecker. No, I did come. Do you not remember what No, you did it. I was happily pregnant. I went on the first day and then I had, um, I just found out actually that my partner was like messaging someone else <laughs> like oh, that yeah. weekend, oh. the day before. So I did come oh. and then I got really sick um, and basically it felt like my brain was about to explode. So I have the book, that's why I learned that relationship yeah, part. This from. is what I want yeah, to say Yeah, I have the book so I read about. it all through and I didn't really need to be at the whole course because I've read the book loads yeah. and I have that book. But um, yeah, my whole face went swollen. Oh my God, I was so sick. He had to come all the way from like, to, it was like near South London. Like oh he had to come all the way and pick me up. Oh and then that's God. the only reason I think we end up staying together because of that. How ill you I was were. ready to make him, yeah, yeah, I was ready for So him. the money parts mm-hmm. is what I, was my biggest takeaway from them. Have I done it? No. That's disgusting. Holly. That's disgusting. Shame on you. My trial was five and a half. No, but I was in a point then where like, money was really really shit for me like mm. i had no spare cash because i was trying to i was running after corporation tax bills that i hadn't paid you know this is another avenue of money we need to you get know, into like, another thing with that though i've had massive bills before like from the age of like 20 i've had massive tax bills like, i remember at one point i owed 30 grand i think i was like 20 and i was absolutely terrified because I, I used to fly a lot like Every yeah. month I'd fly. And I mean, I'd be so scared that when I got back into the country, I wouldn't get arrested because I owed tax and stuff. Like I just- Oh, yeah. mate. Yeah, that's, I, like, that's, that doesn't happen, by the way, guys. You're perfectly okay to keep leaving the country and live your best life. Yeah. But what my idea was, you know what? I'm not gonna think about this or even give a shit. I just know I'm gonna be able to pay this off in one month. That genuine belief, and guess what? One month I was able to pay off. Mm. Yeah. Like one salary. Yeah, I've got outstanding corporation tax from like a year ago. I don't lose sleep over it. I don't stress over it. I'm just like, it gets paid when it gets paid. And that's that. Yeah. Like I, so there was this period where my business took a massive hit. We'd moved into this house. I think I've mentioned it on the podcast before. And I think I had like, well, a five figure amount with corporation tax, which at the time I just could not afford. Brand new baby as well. Like it was a lot. And I, the stress and pressure I put myself under paying the HMRC back, like set up a monthly amount. Babe, I remember, this is what I'm saying, I've had the money and I've lost it. I've, it keeps you humble, right? Mm-hmm. Picking out coins, pennies from your penny jar and like putting it together so you can go and buy a weekly food shop. Like that fucking bad because I was trying to get this money paid for the corporation tax for HMRC. Whereas now I'm just like, you, you haven't even chased me from yeah, last you'll get year. It you get I'm it. so minor compared to these massive corporations. Like, mm. don't stress yourself out. Okay, I think they had like 12p a day. So yeah, I've probably got like a grand on it by now. But <laughs> it is what it is. Yeah. I'm not going to stress myself out the way I did during that time because everything's an energy as well with money. If you're thinking, oh my God, I'm sure. Oh my God, I need money. You put out this desperate energy People won't believe this, but honestly, it is so true. You put out this desperate energy that pushes money away. Once you just relax and then start getting into your, like, creative and thinking, like, you can just attract it so easy. Do you know what? Yeah, I resonate with that because in my type of role, 
you're not always in control of how much commission you get. It's other people's performance that drives that. Yeah. And when I was a lot younger, I was so dogged. I was absolutely obsessed. Let's do better team. Let's coach. Let's do this. Let's do. And whilst that was fun, it quite quickly became exhausting. Mm. I just, I just said, you know what? They're going to make it work. Ultimately, we're in it together. They don't, the team work for themselves as well as what the financial rewards will be for me. And I had a goal beginning of last year. Didn't, it hasn't taken as long as I thought it would actually. I had a goal beginning of last year that after tax, I want to have X amount every month. And rather than stress about it, book hundreds of coaching sessions, start putting pressure on my team. I didn't even tell anyone. I just thought it. And obviously you guys know, I text the other day and I was like, this has really been mm. coming in nicely. And obviously financial responsibilities, you've got family, you've got house, you've got mortgage, etc. And um, I have just completely chilled out about it. I've stayed smart. I haven't gone so far over the top that people are to now be really stressed. Bad in your finances as well, like. Yeah, I think for me that was a lot of emotional spending. Mm. That is, what, you just spend willy nilly, like. Oh, I was a cunt, mate. It was terrible. Really? Yeah, it was. Like, I look back me. now, and it's actually we had a chat because like she was probably like, worse. Help. I think I'm gonna say worse than you because I weren't even making money like that. I right. couldn't. Have, I, yeah. I had yeah. no yeah. business. She was just getting yeah. it. I had no, yeah, debt, credit it's cards, funny, overdrafts, isn't it? A overdrafts. Lot of people do that when they're like really unhappy. It was miserable. And it's like they. Spend you make, it makes you more it. unhappy as yeah. well. But do you know what it is? I think about that, like, because you're so used to being unhappy, it's almost you get a dopamine hit by being more unhappy. Mm. Every time you get that unhappiness, it's almost like a dopamine oh, yeah. your hit. Your body I think gets it's hooked. Actually proven. Yeah. It is. Your body gets hooked to that feeling of anguish and anxiety. It becomes yeah. familiar and comfortable. But my thing was, look, if I really think about it, from a young age. My mum used to love shopping and all of that, but my dad used to earn quite Can a I fair just work. Because mm. we spoke about this. I remember we had a call and I asked you all these questions because I'd done all this money work and we were having the same conversation you're mm. telling me about. So I just want to say to the listener, sit with yourself and have, have this self-check. Yeah, have this And I kind of needed that. I also felt like I could never have had that conversation with any of my other friends because yeah. I felt like they'd go, oh, what are you moaning about? You earn loads. But you were like this new person who didn't really know me. Yeah, and if you decided to judge me, well, I just fucking block you and never talk to you again. I had no shame. I could have just, I, it was so comfortable for me to go, girl, this is what's happening. Maybe I, I just, need to be a money consultant so, Lace, for people. What's, you just said, have a check-in with yourself money-wise. Like, what is the check-in questions to ask yourself? <sighs> you gotta be real, man. This is, this, I'm sweating thinking about it. First, you have to go and look for every all of your accounts. Oh. You need to go look at all the debts, you need to them. write it all down and add it all up. You need to be so fucking real with yourself. This is not time to play. Mm. You need to go through everything you're spending every single month, write it down. What Put it in categories. I'm like food shop, eating out, this, that, transport, what do I, where? You have to look and be like, okay, what are actually essentials and necessities and what are just me fucking about? Coffee's at Costa. Yeah. My Gales receipt Hello. was ridiculous. I was, Mab's like, can I have a cake? No, I Babe, bring my own scales. cake. Oh, that little bakery? Yeah. <laughs> it's lush though, isn't it? But you're right, also, it's ridiculous. I'm understanding when people are taking the piss out of you. I went to the pumpkin patch yesterday and got charged six pound for two waters. <clears throat> so bad. Like, we have to turn around as a consumer and be like, fuck Absolutely off. Not. <laughs> Maybe well, not like that. I can do that. Well, no, but you just put the drink back and you walk off. But it's yeah. thirsty. I know about but inflation. This is the thing. Go to the toilet, find a tab. Oh, yeah, yeah. But legit. I would have been fucking went that out the portal. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. I mean, I so paid for the drinks, right? Because I'm just not gonna. But I was just like, you motherfucker. <clears throat> It's like when you are doing things like this, when it does get them and them surprise spends, it's not going to hit you because mm. you're not being stupid in other areas. And you just really need to sit with yourself. And then you need to sit and be like, okay, what are my spending habits? Are they from my mum or from my dad? Mm. Witness, who have you learned money from? What do I believe about money? Do I believe it's good? Do I believe it's bad? Do I believe I can't have it? You've got to really sit and ask these questions to yourself. What, ask yourself about money. Ask yourself about yourself. And it was the same with Queen. And then she realised like, what you were saying about your mum, mm -hmm. obviously was... She used to love shopping. Shopping was like a thing for her. And obviously I was young and I'm not going to comment on what her financial status was at the time. But if I look back as an adult now, she probably could afford it for a long time and then wasn't able to anymore. But it was too late because she was used to that lifestyle. Mm. But I really used to look up to her and be like, yeah, I want to be able to just at the drop of a hat get, get whatever I want. But so like now I'm really honest with my kids. Like if I don't have the money, I'm like... I'm gonna 
I will buy you this, but you need to understand for the next X, Y, Z, we're not going to be able to do this. And then they will quite quickly go, no, it's okay. Don't worry. Before I felt such an incredible amount of pressure to go. Yes, Eva, of course, Pip. At one point, like there's a little corner shop. Um, and this is recent. So it's not like I'm a fully convert. I had to check myself because I found every day I was picking Pippa up from school. She was so miserable with shit going on. She's moved school now, but I take her to premiere and we'd spank four five four pound fifty on american sweets almost every day oh it adds up it does that's, that's nearly a hundred pound a month yeah that's and i had to check myself and a cake every day like they add up you just mm. don't realize and i'm like why am i even trying to fill the emotional gap with fucking sweets anyway just get home and talk to her about what's I think, wrong i think that's fine but that's a, my pattern i think that's finding a balance so with the coffee one for example obviously everyone knows i work in starbucks a lot for me i see i do weigh up and i'm like look can i really deal with myself spending like basically 15 quid a day in starbucks the amount of hours i do in there mm -hmm. sometimes it's about looking at it and being like does this make me happier being out of the house and working in an environment where i'm networking with yeah, people but yours is different smart? because you need to think of that 15 pound a month as your office space so yeah. that's different that's a business expense and you can actually expense that on your no, business but even that for, i think even but i mean the average person who has a nine to five but even for the average person if like their mental health or something and they're sat at home all day it's like is this no but they don't i'm saying the average so nine to fiver who goes and gets that coffee every single these are the people okay, i'm talking hear, to yeah, yeah. it's not like a mental health thing like you're trying to like oh yeah you can do that like no you have to be so real with yourself you can make a coffee at home yeah get a portable cup make a coffee at home i had to start doing that i was like oh do you know what? i'm gonna start making chai latte at home why do i keep needing to go out and buy them mm. like you have to be so real with yourself like you've got to start cutting back and you've got there's no shame and i hate people feel this way like i get it i get it and i i speak from this because it's all from experience but like there is you feel a shame of having to cut your life back having yeah. to get rid of your car having to downgrade your car yeah having to change your clothes that you wear or not be able to buy new clothes or not be able to go out with your friends anymore like you feel this shame but if you can do that for six months to a year, and really be, thing. it will change your whole fucking life. And what your friends are going out and doing and having fun and doing whatever, you'll be able to do that 10 times. And yeah. Like holidays and whatever, because the way you've changed your mindset and you've changed the person that you are in the process, you're going to attract so much more stuff to you. So it's interesting you said this. So um, I've had the best summer. Jim's had a great summer and now we're both at the point where like, like I have a certain amount that I like to see in my account and when mm -hmm. it drops beneath that I'm just I don't get sweaty but I'm just like mm. Mm, come on girl so and he's the same so like the thing is we're in that new exciting part of our relationship where we love what's the amount together what's the amount See, look how shy and I weird like we are. Like, Mine was always okay. Like good, Mine good. Was, yeah, I like 10 grand. It's definitely not like 10 grand right now. I used to, that was me and my ex. We always used to say we'd like our accounts at That's 10 solid, grand. That's yeah. solid, yeah. So, because that's your safety. And I always used to sorry, do that. The 10, the 10 grand for me is, that's like... Worst case happens. Three months, bills. Yes. And then I'm covered, right? Yep. But it's definitely not there. So we re I'm rebuilding. But obviously he's like, you know, I want to go to Tulum in January and we want to go to Amsterdam, I want to do this. And I'm at a point where I'm going to turn around now because he's also a spender. So I'm conscious of that. I don't want to spend, to spend, spend together. I'm like, right, we need to have goals set in place, which actually my best friend's very, very good at. She'll set herself a goal. And if she does that, then she'll go book the trip or buy herself a designer item. So I'm kind of like... My thing is, I want to get back to that 10 grand once I'm there, then we can go back to the travels. Mm -hmm. And then it's like working your way up, but not completely pulling yourself away to that you can't have all of the bits. Or just being smart. Like, you know, recently I've started selling bits in my wardrobe. Like, I always get people message me after I've had a night out and they'll be like, oh, your dress is really nice. Me knowing I'm probably not going to wear that dress again. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, yeah, I'll sell it. And then sell it more or less at full price that I've, I wore it. Like little s smart things that you can do about that. Have a cleanse of your wardrobe. Have a cleanse. Like I've got freaking baby stuff sat in my bloody attic or in the spare room actually. You know, you just like, it's sat there, just sell it. And it sounds stupid. And I think there's also, again, this whole shame thing. Even I think it where I'll put something on my socials. I've done it many a time mm. where I'm having a clear out and I'm just like, the easiest way for me to get rid of stuff is from my Insta because I've got the network on there. Then you think, I wonder if people think I'm broke. Oh, she's broke now. She's you know selling I mean? her stuff. Do you know what I mean? And and I, isn't it ridiculous? So ridiculous. I know I'm not broke, but it's you know just what? ridiculous. That, and I imagine everyone <laughs> and even, if, even, like if you were, even if you were, good for you. Yeah. You yeah. are working your way out of that yeah, brokenness exactly. by selling the items in your 
clothes that bring you nothing. Do you know what the great app is that I used in my real broke days? Get Rich Lucky Bitch app. So that app makes you become very aware of like everything that comes into you. So it could be money. It could be somebody just lending you a fiver. It could be a free a free trip somewhere but it's like okay well what's that amount what is that amount worth and you're just a lot more conscious of money going out and then money coming in and you're just almost switching your brain to like an abundance mindset really really good app and actually the the book get rich lucky bitch is a very good book as well i'm actually gonna read that again you know happy pocket full of money is a really great book as well and a millionaire secrets of millionaire minds and have a really good book talk about the pots Okay, but I want to speak about this as well, like, because we have a lot of women on here. Like, I was speaking to, to someone the other day, and I was just saying how, as women, actually, we really need to get financially smart. Because, mm. in all honesty, in my situation now, my outgoings are probably, like, three and a half grand a month altogether. So, yeah. And I had, like, someone that would help me if I needed help, ever. And I don't have that anymore. And it's like, okay, this is all on me now. And it's, that's pushed me to have to get really money smart again. But every time that I've got this money smart, I promise you in six months, my account will be back to 10, 20 grand. Yeah, in and I six think- six months, that's all it takes is the commitment of every day showing up. Me, my thing is, me and my partner, we always wanted, however much we're earning, we need to know that we're, as an individual, you're earning enough that if your partner got hit by a bus or broke their leg and didn't work for mm. six, eight, ten weeks, you would be comfortable on your own so they can focus on getting better and not kill themselves to get back to work before it's time. So that's what our goal is, is always keep striving for more. So, you know, if it all hit the fan, if I got the sack or whatever, you can hold the fort for a little while without too much pressure on the other person. Yeah, and my thing yeah. on money is I know so many women, friends of ours, that are very unhappy in relationships but cannot go anywhere because you're so reliant on your on partner. Your mind, yeah. Yeah. Or just, you know, you're always thinking about the family, the family pot. Put money aside for you. You do not know what is around the corner. You don't know what's going to happen. And you do not want to be stuck in an unhappy relationship for the sake of financials. Of the money. It's yeah. not worth it. No. You'll so end up living an unhappy life. What I do, so what I tell people to do, because I really love speaking about money, it's like my favourite topic, and I love like dissecting it. I'm actually going to be like a money consultant. I think you should. You yeah. Are, you, you've really, really gone at... through like the highs and lows of money and <coughs> always and always rebuilt. Yeah, yeah, and I'm really good at like committing and doing the stuff you need to do in order to get more money. So um, with that, so there is the pots, which can be very in depth. Um, but the first thing is just going and doing it. First thing is what I said to you earlier, you've got to really dissect it. That's mm -hmm. where you've got to start. You've got to start on a clean slate, like this is what the situation is. And it's going to look scary, but you've got to go do it. As soon as you start doing it, it will just get better and better. So then I get everyone to do their essentials. How much, because once I've gone through everything, I'm like, how much do you need to spend every single month? The average person is between, if you're lucky, 50%. The average person's probably up to 90%. They only have 10% left of their income left. Mm. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, that 10%, I move into three pots. I give a part of that 10%. I always give, but don't just set up a give to cancer research every month because it's not intentionally giving. I have that pot for when there's birthday presents, birthdays coming up or christenings or if I just want to like buy some of my friends some flowers that will come out my gift pot or if I want to give to a homeless person because I've just got money in me that will come out my gift pot. So you don't have to like, it's, mine's like a saving account now but it's, that's only going to give to someone. Obviously if I really need it I'll give it to myself. Um, and then, so I always say give, I just think it's really really the best energy and plus when you have got birthday stuff come up, you're not stressed because you're like, oh, mm -hmm. I've got a spot for that. You're yeah. not feeling like it's not coming out of your monthly wage. The other one is saving. So I always say like put, put and I don't care how you split up this last bit of money. You could put 2.5% I do for gifts of months, or you could do 20% for something of 100% of it goes, in, well, not 100% because it's free pots, but you know, it doesn't matter how you split it. Do whatever feels good to you. So I give, I the other 10% is saving or the other few percent. And then the other few percent of that is um, play. So that's the money where you can go and have fun with that that month to go cinema or... Mm. I just promise, guys, it's just the compound of this. Yeah. Just doing it, it doesn't make sense. We don't really understand because we're not that smart with money. No one's taught us it. But just trust me, the compound of you doing these little actions will grow into something huge. And it was crazy. Like, I started this and I didn't have a pot to piss in. Then, like, two, three months later, I had £1,600 saved. 
I remember him giving mm-hmm. examples at this event and like how game changing it was for people. It just, I think, so for example, you would have money dates. I remember you when you would actually have money dates. I do your them money now. would come in, you'd have like your glass of wine or water in your case, or brandy now, um, <laughs> and then I'll sit. Put wine, and, water in a wine glass, those jam. Yeah, and so you sit water. and then go through your finances, outgoings. I'll put a bit of slow jams on. I think I'm going to start doing this. I think it's really important because. I spend, I don't look at prices of things. I don't really look at my bank account ever. It's not good. It's not but good. with money, like you said, it's an energy. Yeah. And I say this to everyone that I work with. I, I, the first thing I say to them is, if you would, if your partner was treating you how you were treating your money, how would you feel? Yeah, shit. Because mm. my attitude is money comes, money goes. And that's not the Imagine attitude. your partner was like, Yeah, no, come, Polly comes, I know. <laughs> Yeah. That's no, how deep. I know. And like the thing is, this is my biggest thing with people. The relationship with money is the longest relationship you're gonna ever have. It's the most the one you're always going to have to have. You're always yeah. gonna need money. So like your boyfriend can go, your kids are gonna go. Mm. Like loads your husband can die. And actually, if you're if you're able to just give the money that little bit more attention, it can make the difference between you being so much ha- not happy in life because you shouldn't make no, money around happiness. Like but less I don't stressed. care what people say. When you have money, it's you're not so that you're happy. it's not that you're like happy, happy, but you're just you have no worries. No it's stress. Life is it that little money, it takes like, the edge off, doesn't it? Money doesn't make you happy. It gives you freedom and choices. choices. It doesn't yeah. make you happy like no. so many miserable millions. I've been yeah, I've been unhappy. So I've got a question um, because I know a lot of people who are skeptic, skeptic, is that the right? Yeah. I'm not sure. Like I know people launch different businesses. They want to teach people to do money and you talk about it as an energy. Like some people actually really think that's bullshit. And I know that sounds shocking, but some people do. I've had conversations where people are saying to me, this is bullshit. It's just people selling an idea. They're selling a dream. They're taking advantage of people when they're desperate. So I was kind of like, I don't know, because my take on that is if somebody chooses to go on a financial growth journey, and that means they've got to pay someone or buy a course, I don't know that, like who forced you, right? Mm. Like who yeah, has forced you to pay that? It's your choice. But a lot of people are really skeptical because, you know, we've got this people building businesses on Amazon, drop shipping, this, this, this. Yeah. There's so many scams and... People you know, sell you the dream. So how do you know what is the right one for you and that you're not going to get it's, screwed over trying to better yourself? It's not even scams. The reality of it is people make things sound easy mm. for a quick sell, which is wrong. But um, the drop shipping works, but it is hard. And actually right. what people don't share, which pisses me off, because I've looked at drop shipping many a time, is like you know the targeted ads and actually like you've got to find the right product you've got to learn the skill you've got to learn the skill set and the thing mm. is about coaches there's a lot of amateurs out there that yeah. will just want to make a quick buck so i understand why they're skeptic but in terms of like the manifesting money and the energy and everything like you just got to look at the most successful people around you and majority of successful people like i can think of like colin mcgregor i've heard and just like they've all got such a strong mindset and all talk about the same thing about, you know, mindset and um, like laws of attraction and things like that. And that's what yeah, kind of do. what got me into all of that because I was like, well, they're all millionaires. I'm going to listen to all of the people Absolutely, having success yeah. in life compared to the naysayer who's like, oh, it's all rubbish. <laughs> My thing is for people like your question mm. is... I don't like genuine want... conversation I had for with one. someone, by the way. Yeah, I generally don't. For one, I don't want to talk to you because you're mm. jarring me. And do they so have gonna... money? No, no, wait, wait. I'm, they don't have money. I, can, yeah. I know who they are. Yeah. Like, no, I don't know them personally, but I know that type of That's person. Oh, I was yeah, like, yeah. Jesus, who the fuck told you? Because no, it wasn't me. Generally, just I know yeah. the type of person. They, Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk to you anyway. Like your energy sucks. I'm so sorry it does. And my energy just can't handle that shit. So for one, because this is, everything they've just said is such bullshit because I've just given you three books there that have absolutely changed my life financially. It's not about you have to go take a course because you really don't. Mm. Do you know what you need to do? Go in and learn the fucking skill. You can watch YouTube videos. Go take your time that is free. Be resourceful and change your fucking story. Like, this is bullshit. Why you got to go get a coach? You're just being lazy. You want to pay for someone else to fix your fucking problem. You go fix your problem. And do you know what? I did a money course. You know how much I charge for that? 50 pounds that knowledge of how much skills i've had to accumulate by going to courses <laughs> reading the books do you know how many 
courses that I've had to pay for, how many books I've had to invest in, how many hours I've invested to accumulate them skills just for 50 quid for someone. Because I was like, you know what, I'm not going to give it away for free because it's like no, a yeah. thing. And I get an accountability group with it. Um, but I was like, it's 50 quid just because I'm like, you need to make an investment for yourself. So for me, I was like, I don't want to get rich of this. I genuinely want to help people make their money. Like, yeah, get yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. I just, I care about people in that way. And that's, I have other money. I don't need people's money for that. So, um, but the, how many times I read Millionaire Mindset, that book says to you, read it repeatedly until you get it. Mm. I read it three times in a row one time. Every month I read that book. I remember. By the third time, I was like, I'm fucking sick. I was yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. reading this book. I was like, he told me until I've got this, I need to read the book. So I didn't stop. And yeah. I was just reminding myself, I need to go find that book. Probably tomorrow I'll go find it because I know it's in my storage somewhere. I'm going to go read it, start reading it again. Do you know Those what? people that moan are the ones that don't want to invest their time in themselves. And yeah, it's a real shame, isn't it? They're saying it's money, money, money. But no. also, do you know what's funny? That's obviously popping up on their algorithm on Instagram and Facebook for a reason because they're broke and they're looking for ways to make money, but they don't want to spend the time investing in themselves. So really, invest your money in a coach that's done all the legwork, like Lacey said, and, you know... Well, person. don't even do that. Just YouTube. Be your own coach. I and guess this is what I'm saying. They're lazy, so yeah. they don't yeah. want to do it. So this is what's popping up. Yeah, that's up. why you're going. Yeah, there. But then, that's they're... on you, fam. That's on you. Yeah, <laughs> there are also some people who are like, they learn differently. They're not good at self discipline, and they know that, right? So they're like, eff it. You Let know, me get. Everyone's good at self discipline. Yeah, but just everyone. But just, for whatever different this, circumstances, you, you've just contradiction on that. It is. You've just not. You don't want to teach yourself to be good at self discipline. That's all it is. You yeah. can't be yeah. asked to love yourself enough to treat yeah. yourself good at self discipline. I think I, yeah. I changed. I was terrible at self discipline. I'm not, guys. I was always late. I just would forget things. I was terrible. I was like, Lace, you want to keep living like this? It's bullshit. You're not achieving anything anymore. Yeah. Like, it's gone to shit. you got to change. But what I'm saying is, all that aside, yes, there are people who will be um, more disciplined. They'll go on YouTube. They'll learn the skill. And then other people go, actually, you know what? I've got a bit of spare. Let me invest myself. I'm going to buy yeah. that course, right? So those people who can afford it, they can, they want to. How? I kind of want to talk on how do you avoid the scammers that are just going to shaft you, take your money and get nothing. How do you know what the right that's, way for you is? Quick fix, that's probably, okay, okay. I think you, I would never invest in a course. Like for example, there's been courses that I've purchased, but I've been following someone for six months. Like, mm -hmm. I want to know you're the real deal. I'm looking for testimonials. I want to understand. Also, you can tell by price points. Okay. Like, <sighs> courses should, I don't, well, it's, You've done so many different courses, so I can't put a fun, a, a price on it and be like, if you're spending this amount, this amount, then, you know, you're getting shafted. I think, like, look at what it is that you want to learn, and you mm -hmm. should kind of have an idea of, like, okay, yeah, that makes sense for it to be about £100 for X amount. I don't know, it's a bit of a difficult one. How long's a piece of string? Mm. I think the thing is, if you are going to go do a course, you've got to invest your time in it anyway. There's no going to be, a, if there's a course that's selling you that I'm going to change your life, that's bullshit. Yeah, probably the only person yeah. can change your life is you. Yeah. So for one, stay away from them. That's for sure. Yeah. Like, there's no quick, easy fix to change in your life, guys. I'm sorry there isn't. There's no quick way to get around mm. it. you got to go do the fucking work. I don't care if you've got the best course co co coach in the world. I could be paying 20 grand a session. Mm. If I'm not going to change, I'm what just is going the fucking 20 point? grand a session. Yeah, it's yeah. like knowledge is power, but it's not unless you're going to do the work. Yeah. 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 So it's just like, it's just, that's just, it just doesn't work. Like, you just have to commit. And yeah, if you're trying, if you're like, oh, this course is going to tell me I want to make 10 grand a month if I work with them for six months. No, like, unless you're willing to go and make that change, that's going to be a scam for you. Also, mm -hmm. look specifically at the course. Like, if there says something in the course about what you're struggling with or exactly what your needs are, like, most courses will always give you an overview of what's included, then go for it. Again, what Lace has just said, if someone says, oh, it's going to change your life, I'm going to do this, I'm going to make you 10, six figures, whatever, then that is bullshit to me. Mm -hmm. Like, that's... A, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're such a. You I've can't had say that. Of that. It's and it is. It's everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is yeah, absolutely yeah. everywhere. And, and people, people are like, fully playing on that as mm. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No one's going to change your life. Nah. You got to do that. And I promise it's rough. It'll be worth it in the end. Yeah. Mm. So I feel like this has been a great chat. I absolutely love speaking about money. So I just love getting into it. I think the biggest takeaways are getting really real with your money, sitting down, diving into it, mm. getting really intimate with it. And the second takeaway is um, to then start the pots, read some books, yeah. 
well, second takeaway, do the pots or that percentage thing I said about. Third takeaway is like really start to learn whilst you're doing this, get the skills now. If you want to change your money mindset, you've got to start reading some books, going on YouTube. Mm. If you want to get a coach, get a coach. Mm. Like that's your business, yeah, you know? Totally. But um, message me, like I absolutely love talking about money. Also know that we are in an era where you have got the opportunity to make money from anything these days. Like yeah. the online world, like I'm so grateful I was born in this era and not like a hundred years ago. Can you imagine how hard it is actually? I'm into like set up a full-on traditional business, business. Mm-hmm. I just couldn't dream of doing that no. so there are ways but if you are someone that's struggling just know that you are going to have to invest some time and energy you might have to cut back on netflix or yeah that's where people need to cut back and understand that if you're wanting you're willing to change up your life or level up in some ways it means that you are going to have to sacrifice some things that's the reality of it yeah um but give yourself a goal. Like I'm giving myself a goal for next year of what I want to earn and what I want to save and what I want to pay off. Um, I think it's just like a really healthy, healthy place to be. I love that. I feel like that's, that's so much really good. Yeah. I'm gonna go do a money date when I get home. Me too. I'm actually, so like excited. Past few weeks. I sent you the video, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, go for it and this start. It. I'm gonna do it. I I'm must, excited for you. I must open my Monzo account at least three times a day. Do you know what? I've just clocked. I actually had a letter turn up today. So I set up a Monzo account, must have been about three years ago, a, like an, a, just a plain account. Never did anything with it. That is just a plain account, what they do. All yeah. Stuff. Mm. yeah. So, and I had a card turn up today or yesterday. What? You know, like when it expires. Yeah. Just no. Just you can't. It's a sign. There we go. It's a sign, girl. That's a sign. universe. Yeah, I I'm got you on Monzo as well, didn't I? I'm like obsessed with Monzo. There we go. It changes your financial you life. Thanks, guys. Loved it. Yeah, I hope this has helped. Yeah, I hope this has helped someone start a better, healthier financial journey for themselves if they're struggling. It's helped me. <laughs> Trust me, we've all been there, man. Just of don't course. Come when you Let's have a moment. recap end of season three to see where we're all at. Yeah. How's the account looking? Yeah. Yeah. yeah.